Jay here for Stratford Paddock. As you can see, I'm outside Old Trafford, as usual, for the paper talk, and the weather is mild. It's just about Parker weather. Uh, quite a few stories to get through, so we'll crack on. As you would expect, there's a story about Donny van der Beek, probably the most spoken about Manchester United player with the fewest appearances ever, if that makes sense. Um, and there's reports that his agent, Donny van der Beek's agent, is working hard um, as Man United find buyer for Dutchman. So, out of favour, this is in the mirror, out of favour Manchester United midfielder Donny van der Beek has failed to hide his frustrations in recent weeks and he's now said to be looking for a move away. Um, and it, then it goes on to say about the fact that he's, you know, he's frustrated and that he showed his frustrations, frustrations, um, when he was sort of throwing his bib down a little bit after the uh, Villarreal game or during the Villarreal game and spitting out his chewing gum. I mean, it was all a bit sort of, you know, neither here nor there, really. It wasn't like he proper kicked off, but you could see he was a little bit peeved, shall we say. Um, and now it's been suggested that his agent is looking for a move and that maybe he could be heading to Juventus. Um, there's a report, I think it's in the mirror, but it, it started from Italian outlet, sorry, Calcio Mercato. You can judge for yourself how re reputable they are. I know we've covered them quite a few times. Um, and it, they suggest that former Ajax teammate uh, Mas Mathis De Litt, uh could play a role in helping Juve steal a match by reaching out to his fellow compatriot. We know that Donny van der Beek has sort of been a little bit disgruntled, should we say. His agent's been making noises quite some time. He's still well thought of by a lot of people. A lot of United fans rate Donny van der Beek quite highly and because of what he did at Ajax. He's going to be sort of coveted by a few clubs you would expect despite the fact he's had to play for Manchester United since he came over from Ajax I still I think there'll still be a lot of clubs looking at him so it wouldn't surprise me if there's someone like Juventus looking to maybe make a deal for him but will he go in January that's the big question says here a January move I'm not so sure well as always we'll keep you posted on that one there's obviously a bit of an issue there um Ole Gunnar Solskjaer spoke about it last week I think he said I manage a squad full of internationals um competitive footballers who want to make a difference want to play uh they all want to be on the pitch of course they do so he's sort of playing it down a little bit not getting broiled into a sort of war of words shall we say uh we know Steve spoke to Steve Stephen spoke to uh Donny van der Beek with Rio Ferdinand not long ago and he seemed quite level-headed, he seemed sort of pretty honest in his assessment and obviously keen to, to play for Manchester United and you know he wasn't sort of making any any sort of ultimatums or saying anything out of turn. I thought it was a pretty reasonable interview but he's going to want to play football and he isn't playing much football. He can't even get, an, get off the bench at a minute and it looks like players like Jesse Lingard for example have leapfrogged him in the pecking order so you wouldn't be surprised if Donny van der Beek wants to move, whether that happens in January, I'm not so sure. The games are going to come thick and fast and you know one or two injuries that Donny van der Beek, you'd expect him to figure if we, we lose someone like Paul Pogba or maybe Bruno Fernandes for any length of time, then maybe he will get a chance. So we'll keep you posted on that one, but that's one that's been rumbling on for a little while now and it looks set to rumble on for some time more. Um, another story during the rounds is Edinson Cavani. I think we had Edinson Cavani to Barcelona the other day and now it's Edinson Cavani to Real Madrid, um, and this has come from Mundo Deportivo, and it says that Edison Cavani is reportedly prepared to leave United in the January transfer window in favour of joining Real Madrid. Um, it just goes to go on to say about um, the fact that he's, you know he joined on a free transfer, and, and the fact that you know games have been limited and whatnot, and Real Madrid could be in the market for him. I said this about the Barcelona thing. The Barcelona thing looked like highly unlikely because Barcelona don't have a lot of money. You know, they had to get, I think, was it Memphis had to take a pay cut from what he was initially offered because of how skint they are. Real Madrid have more money. Real Madrid actually doing, you know, quite well this season. But I know they've had, obviously, you know, a bad defeat in the Champions League. But you could see that a player would be attracted to go to Real Madrid. Would Manchester United be willing to let him go, though? I'm not so sure. I don't see the point in that. I think that Edison Cavani still got a part to play at this club this season. And I think letting him go in January when we could use him from January onwards makes no sense and it's not like we're going to get a load of money for him either so yeah I just don't think that one it rings true for me but as always we'll keep you posted and if there are any developments there we'll let you know but I'd like to see Edison Cavani stay till the end of the season and I think he will do um, another story and this one I wouldn't take it with a pinch of salt as much as a bucket of salt I think this is an absolute load of nonsense but I'll report it to you because that's what we do. We tell you what's going on in the paper talk. Hence the reason this is called the paper talk. Um, I think this is the toilet paper talk, to be honest with you, this story. Uh, Man United is interested in Gareth Southgate as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer fights to improve situation. Uh, Manchester United boss Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is in the spotlight following his size draw with Everton. Um, and then it goes on to say that... Um, 
Gareth Southgate is is a potential target for the club, and that's someone we're looking at. I mean, really, Gareth Southgate? I don't see that one happening at all, and I don't want it to happen at all. I know he did well with England, getting us to the Euro Finals and getting us to the World Cup Semi Finals. But do you honestly think Gareth Southgate has got the pedigree to manage Manchester United? And people go, well, well, there's only one. Look at what Oli's won. Oli had won titles in Norway. Oli knew the club. He'd been at the club for a long time. He's a club legend. Gareth Southgate, he's done nothing at club level other than get Middlesbrough relegated. And before you say Oli got Cardiff relegated, Gareth Southgate was at Middlesbrough a lot longer than Oli was at Cardiff. Cardiff were pretty much doomed when Oli got there. Gareth Southgate came into a Middlesbrough team that had been relatively stable. They got relegated, then he got sat when they were in the Championship, then he's went to the England under-21s, did okay, got the England job and has done relatively well there, but has shown me nothing that makes you think he's some sort of tactical genius. And also the way he handles players. Has he handled Marcus Rashford, Jadon Sancho or Mason Greenwood in the right way? Is that a man you'd want to come here and manage him? I wouldn't. I think his, his handling of Mason Greenwood has been shocking. Putting him up for an interview after the Harry Maguire incident as an 18-year-old, his first ever press conference, and he's letting him answer questions about Harry Maguire and Mykonos. The way he handled the Iceland um, incident when they were ringing those girls or whatever, and he proper threw him under the bus with it. I'm not for Gareth Southgate managing anyone here at Manchester United. I, you know, I don't think he does a good job of managing England at times, let alone coming here and being our manager. Is he the man that's going to get us challenging for titles and challenging for... for um, Champions Leagues. Listen, if you don't want Ollie's going to Solskjaer to be your manager, then that's fair enough. I don't agree with that at the minute, but I understand that there's a lot of frustrations going on with the results. But Gareth Southgate, do me a favour. Not a chance. Um, another story doing the rounds is Man United step up their interest in AC Milan's Frank Kessie. I think we've had this one before and it's developing again. Um, reports in Italy, I think this is coming from uh, Calcio Mercato, saying that he could be a replacement for Paul Pogba, 24-year-old midfielder from AC Milan. Um, looks like in January he'll be able to sign a pre-contract agreement, although his £6.8 million a year salary could be a sticking point. And just one final story we've got as well. G Sun Park's given an interview asking that fans don't sing the, uh, the famous or the infamous Park song that we all know about Koreans eating dogs. He doesn't like it. He doesn't want players, uh, fans to sing it. He heard him singing it towards um, He Chan Hwang, um, who plays for Wolves, and he wants it to stop. He says he doesn't like it and he's a bit embarrassed by it. And he said that when he first came to Old Trafford, he didn't mind it because it was like, oh, United fans are singing a song about me. It felt like, uh, you know, something to be proud of. But he wants fans to stop. I haven't got a problem with stop, stopping singing that chant, and I'm not going to dictate or tell people if they're offended by something like that. And, you know, they are Korean, well, whether they should be offended by it because they know better than I do. And, I love G-Sun Park, and if he says that, I'm not going to do it. Uh, anyway, that's been the Paper Talk. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. Let's get to 700,000 subscribers by the end of the season. We can do it. Check out our merchandise as well at paddockmerch.com. We'll have all the usual suspects later on today. should have the Premier League P-Tate with uh, McCullough and Joe. We'll have uh, the Paddock Podcast as well. Uh, I think all four of us might be on that, but I'll double-check because you never know. Busy people, aren't they? Um, I've been Jay Motte. Thanks for watching.